The Swedish community is still facing a chilly breeze. The strict money rules are expected to slowly affect the local economy and the crucial country Sweden trades with. Things might get better when prices go down and the policy rates are reduced. But when is this? Now, let's take things a little while back. The Swedish economy. Sweden's economy has stayed quite steady for many years and overall has been growing steadily since 1970. However, there were tough times in the late 1980s and early 1990s. During that period, Sweden faced low growth and high inflation and its currency, the Swedish krona, was devalued multiple times. The early 1990s financial crisis hit hard, causing instability in Swedish banks. Two of them were taken over by the government, unemployment shot up, and both government spending and national debt soared. Getting back to stability wasn't easy. However, by making and sticking to reforms, Sweden changed its economy. This paved the way for strong growth, even in the face of uncertain global economic conditions. The International Monetary Fund reports that Sweden's national debt to GDP radio has mostly decreased since 1995. Throughout this time, Sweden's ratio has consistently been lower than the average in the Eurozone. Remarkably, all three major credit agencies give Sweden the highest credit rating, a rarity even among developed economies. After the 1990s crisis, successive Swedish governments have effectively controlled public spending, a trend they maintained even after the 2008 global financial crisis. Sweden achieved this by revamping its economic governance through a set of regulations. In 1996, a cap of public spending was introduced, along with the addition of the surplus goal for the government budget. These measures have largely remained in place. A dynamic economy. Today, Sweden boasts a diverse and highly competitive economy. In the IMD World Competitiveness Ranking in 2023, which assess economies, Sweden secured the eighth position. The World Bank highlights a key aspect of the Swedish economy, its openness and liberal approach to trade and business. Traditionally, Sweden has been an export-oriented nation, consistently maintaining a trade surplus where the value of exported goods and services exceeds that of imports. Apart from sustaining competitiveness in goods and manufacturing, Sweden had experienced robust growth in service sectors like information and communications technology, or ICT. The country has given rise to several unicorns, companies with a valuation surpassing USD 1 billion while unlisted. Notable examples include video game developers King and Mojang, fintech company Klarna, and music streaming service Spotify, some of which had subsequently gone public on stock exchanges. But now, things are not going as well as they are supposed to. The long haul. The Swedish economy began losing momentum from an exponentially strong level as early as the beginning of 2022. This resulted in stagnant GDP and expectations point towards economic contraction this year. The main hindrance is domestic demand and the export industry is also encountering more challenging times. Due to the tightening of monetary policy, Various challenges have emerged, and the forecast suggests that GDP is likely to remain weak in 2024. Inflation is on a downward trend, prompting the Risk Bank to consider cutting interest rates next year, which could bring some relief to households and businesses facing difficulties. A slow recovery is anticipated to start in 2025, although resource utilization is expected to be lower than usual throughout the forecast period. Despite the challenges, there are positive indicators. The labor market has surprisingly shown strength this year, with a relatively modest downturn in employment compared to expectations. Additionally, GDP has demonstrated strength in nominal terms, reflecting current prices. This is evident in household spending and income, contributing to fewer bankruptcies, higher employment, and overall economic resilience this year. The impact of the central bank's rate hikes and reduced balance sheets is affecting household finances and business results, leading to a slowdown in nominal growth. This, in turn, is expected to drive inflation lower and weaken both demand and production. 
The forecast predicts a lowering of policy rates in 2024 and 2025, but the interest rate level at the end of the forecast period is still expected to be significantly higher than before the pandemic. Sluggish spending and housing prices. However, despite these efforts, high inflation has diminished households' purchasing power, leading to a decrease in consumption volumes. The increasing interest expenses are also contributing to the erosion of purchasing power and putting pressure on home prices. Although home prices recovered somewhat over the summer following a previous decline, there is concern that prices will further decrease in the future, albeit more gradually than the sharp decline seen before. This is crucial for various reasons, as trends in home prices typically influence households' willingness to spend. The expectation of lower inflation and somewhat reduced interest rates in 2024 is anticipated to provide some support for spending and home prices. However, by the end of 2025, home prices are likely to still be significantly below the peak level observed in 2022, while consumption volumes remain essentially unchanged since 2021. Speaking of inflation, a struggling economy is not what people either inside or outside Sweden have come to expect of the country as Sweden has typically been associated with economic resilience. Notably, the country navigated through the global financial crisis of 2008 to 2010 relatively unharmed. In fact, Sweden's finance minister at the time, Andreas Borg, was recognized as Europe's best in 2011 by the Financial Times. From 2008 to 2021, Sweden maintained an average annual GDP growth of 1.7%, which was twice that of the EU as a whole, 0.85%. For many, Sweden has been viewed as a shining example of successful macroeconomic management and performance over the years. So, what has gone wrong? In Europe, inflation in the prices of everyday goods is notably high and persistent with Sweden facing particular challenges. The weakness of the corona and a lack of competition in crucial sectors like retail have intensified inflation. This lack of competition allows businesses to increase prices with minimal restraint. Additionally, the Swedish government has taken limited measures to shield households from soaring energy prices. In terms of GDP, only two out of 28 other European governments have allowed fewer funds for this purpose than Sweden. However, the most significant concern by a considerable margin is the housing market. Housing prices in Sweden have experienced a more pronounced and rapid decline from the bubble territory compared to other European countries. This decline has had an inevitable impact on consumer confidence, especially in a country where approximately 70% of households are owner-occupiers. These households have also witnessed a faster and more extensive increase in regular housing-related expenses than in other regions, leading to reduced spending on other items. Now, how to account for these particularly severe housing effects? Sweden's central bank, the Riksbank, has indeed raised interest prices, although the approach has been less aggressive compared to the Federal Reserve or Bank of England. This decision has significantly impacted the housing market, and analysts have pointed out the crucial role played by both the quantity and nature of Swedish mortgage debt. In comparison to other countries, the level of such debt concerning disposable household income is elevated, and a substantial portion of this debt is subject to variable rather than fixed rates. This distinctive combination of high mortgage debt relative to income and a significant portion being subject to variable rates has contributed to a notable effects on the Swedish housing market. Well, the question now remains. If you were in Sweden, how would you navigate the housing market changes and rising inflation affecting households? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more insightful updates on global economies. Until next time, stay curious.